Hello and welcome back everyone to Universe Sandbox. Today we're going to be seeing if we can get two binary orbiting planets to both be habitable at the same time. So we'll just try to do random planets. Um, the only the way this works if there's enough tidal forces to heat the planets up without there being a star. I don't even know if this is like possible. I know we can do one. One shouldn't be a problem, but doing two brings in some interesting issues. Um, but that's a really interesting looking planet. It's all snowy. All right, and it's negative 270 degrees, and that brings us into an issue because obviously life cannot live at absolute zero. Um, but, but we can try to do some things on the outside. Like, for example, we can give it an atmosphere to try to trap in heat that is released by the planet. Um, huh. and, oh, oh, actually, it's working. We, we have the temperature rising slowly now. So it would appear that the tidal forces are creating some heat. And we'll go ahead and give this one an atmosphere too. See if we get the same effect. Yes, it's heating up. Let's speed things up a lot so that I don't have to wait years. And the temperatures are definitely moving in the right direction. Are they speeding up or just going at a steady speed? Ah, steady pace. Look at that. That's pretty good. Uh, we can try to get it a little bit better by making the planets closer, but I think if we made them any closer, they'd rip each other to shreds. So, but as you can see, we're actually getting a very steady rate. We're at negative 250 now. I think we can speed this up a bit more without causing major issues to the simulation. Um, negative 250. This is going to take forever still. Let's see if there's anything else we can do. We could actually increase the atmosphere mass a little bit further. We can do one and a half times Earth's atmosphere just in an attempt to speed things up. I mean, a little bit of pressure, but it won't kill you. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> Don't even know what's in the atmosphere right now. That's probably important to know. All right, so the equilibrium temperature looks like it's at about 100 degrees, but then it switches to negative, so it's really hard to tell where it's going to be happy. Uh, what we do know is that this is kind of a really even heating method because obviously it's moving around. Oh, unless it was like this was moving, spinning at the same rate as this was moving around, which is it? Oh, it's pretty close, but because there's a uh, axis that's kind of tilted there, it's not going to do that. So that's good. That would have been an issue uh, because then one side of the planet would get extremely hot and one would it. Although at some point the, the temperature would just even out, so it's all right. Okay, so at this rate we are reaching uh, above two, negative 200 degrees, so still cold but it's not like the worst could be worse I think I can kick the simulation up a little bit further maybe even more yeah see the effect becomes oh all right I guess that's working uh, this will be done in about two minutes it's like warming up a frozen hot pocket uh, <laughs> Except it's a planet and we're trying to put life on it. We'll just wait. Lycurn is looking pretty happy there. We got like a triangle around it because we can only like render three frames of this planet existing. It's going too fast. All right, maybe I can push it a little bit faster. We could get lasers involved, but generally when I get lasers involved, things get messy. All right, so the, the simulation is getting pretty, I won't lie, it's getting pretty wobbly. Look at the look at the steps. It's having a little bit of trouble. It's all right though, as long as the game is still working. We're at we're at a, a negative ninety eight. Oh, we're almost there. <laughs> all right, um, we can start looking at other things like oh, I actually kind of like that appearance. That's kind of good. All right, never mind. <sighs> we want this to illuminate if 
habitable so that we can tell if it's habitable. We're gonna do the same thing with the other one, turn on city lights, if habitable. We'll make this one blue just because blue looks cool. So if you're not blue, then you should be blue, which means sad, so get it? Very funny. Okay, light garden is just looking looking pretty good. We're getting to a temperature now that it's actually almost livable. Some things could live in like negative 50. I mean, this isn't too extreme anymore. Still no stars, still just using their gravitational pull to create heat. And I wish this graph was a little bit bigger just so that I could see. Huh. Actually, slowing down the simulation made the heat go up way faster. Alright, that totally makes sense. Or it's just allowing the graph to get longer. Not really sure. Is it calming down though, because it, they may just continue going until they just melt, and that would be bad. Alright, we're almost... All right, liquid water time. Oh, look at that. That was great. It just complete. Oh, wow. That's actually awesome. Look. Oh my God, and there's city lights. It's habitable already? Are you kidding me? I didn't even have to do much. Oh, it's totally going to bake to death, which is a little bit unfortunate. What is the, what is going to happen? It's 92.4% similar to earth. How lucky did I get? Holy moly. All right, we can tweak the albedo, which will help us out a little bit. Um, I want to see what the effective temperature is so we can see like what it's going to hit. Uh, where is that at? It's somewhere, I know it's somewhere. Where is the effective temperature? Oh, look at the title stress. Yeah, yeah. The heating effect is one, or it's about one exawatt. That's just insane. Okay, imagine the waves. There's a very, very tiny, tiny amount of mass loss. That's just how it's gonna go though. Hopefully it's not like the water and atmosphere, but that's definitely what it is. <laughs> okay, great. We, oh, equilibrium temperature is currently like 120 degrees, so we'll turn up the amount of reflect, no? Uh-oh. All right, up is making that go down. Yeah, it's different from when it's heating from the inside and when it's heating from the, that's, a, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just changing as the orbit. I, I don't even think this matters because it's no star, yeah. Yeah, it's not a star that's giving it heat. That's crazy because it would just be pitch black. Things wouldn't even evolve eyes. This planet over here is at... What temperature are you at? 30. Alright, that's reasonable and I can actually save some water. This is at... 3? Three. 3. This is at 30. I mean, they are habitable right now, and like, they do look pretty cool. Oh, you can see the blue city lights on this one! Oh man, beautiful. But the issue is that they can't be habitable forever, because eventually, they're not going to have that equilibrium anymore, they're just going to get too hot. So what we need to do is we actually have to accelerate the orbit or the speed of one of these, or both of these, so that they go a little bit further apart from each other, like that. What this does is it makes it so that they aren't heating as evenly anymore. And if we actually expand, I wanna reset this graph actually, so that we can see it, because now when it gets further away, we should see it cool. And if it cools, all right, average surface temperature. All right, so see how it kind of does a little bit of a dive, but it, it's not enough. It's definitely not enough. So we are going to give it a little bit more oomph. There we go. Oh no, that's too much. Oh God, it left. Oh no. Okay. Oh, oh, rip. Okay, Um. not too late. Wait, did I just save it? 
Did I just actually save it by doing- Yo! Oh man. Now that's luck. Alright, let's see if this is stable. This could actually- Still not stable. I mean, it's definitely heating up more slowly. Um, but it's not stable enough. So what we're gonna do is at this close point, we're gonna just move it a little bit further away. Hopefully they don't crash into each other because I'm messing with it. And they've lost each other. All right. Excuse me, be friends again. All right, that's way too close. How about this? Oh, oh, all right, wait a second. It, it it's cooling now. Oh, just slight tweaks. Wait a second. This might be perfect. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, it's so close. I think I'm actually going to call that good enough. I mean, it is getting colder at a very, 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 very slow rate. I could just move it a little bit closer, though. Oh, no, that made a huge difference. God, these tiny, tiny differences end up doing so much. Look at that. Now it's like... Man, it's so hard to guess. Oh! Oh, that is real... Alright. Whatever. You know what? It could be better. Alright, technically the temperature is dropping, but I'm gonna call this a win because if I tweaked with it forever, I could get it perfect. We've actually terraformed two planets without a star. Now the crazy thing to think about is this might actually be possible in our universe. I mean, if two planets got stuck orbiting each other close enough for it to create enough heat, there would be some crazy tidal forces on these planets and life would probably have to adapt in some wacky ways, but this is plausible. Um, likely? No, but it it could happen. So with that, thank you all for watching. Leave a like to subscribe, or leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I will see you all next time in these two planets are habitable without a star. Oh, that's crazy.